sometimes it's less expensive to make your own negative carriers than to buy them. Welcome to the Naked Photographer, where I'll be exposing myself. No, 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 I won't. Mm -hmm. I saw it better in my head. If you've watched any of my previous videos, you know that I use this DeVere 5108 8x10 enlarger. Now to print smaller negatives, I need to have adapters in the negative carrier. This is the negative carrier. It is not a small thing. It holds an 8x10 piece of film. For anything smaller than that, then there are adapters that go into it, such as this which has an even smaller adapter to go in there for 4x5. Other adapters are available for smaller size film, but here in the US they are hard to find and when you do find them they tend to be expensive. So rather than try to hunt one down at a good price, which I've been trying to do for a few years, I have decided instead to make my own. Now making a negative carrier is not hard. You can do so with just a mat board, a ruler, an exacto knife and a little bit of patience. But I like to be a little bit extra when I do stuff. So I am going to make one out of metal. And I'm actually going to use an Omega D 4x5 enlarger negative carrier to uh, use as my base. So this is a 6x7 carrier that is medium format, six centimeters by seven centimeters. And I'm going to take my existing frame we're going to mark what size it needs to be, and then we're going to cut it down. Then we're going to see if we can get it to fit in there, and then I'll have a medium format carrier uh, for a fraction of the price as trying to buy even a used one. So let's, uh, let's fire up some tools and see if we can get this cut down. First though, I need to mark where my lines are going to be so I need to center this up. So let's move down to the studio and see if we can center this up and uh, mark some straight lines. Got the scroll saw. Look at the blade here. Looks like I need to go get a new one. So let's go take care of this real quick. Do you wish to? All right, we're back. The blades. Rain starting to fall. Now I have gone ahead and marked this. I didn't show that um, because quite frankly, nothing's more boring than watching somebody draw a line. Uh, but I've got the dimensions of my outer cuts here. This is the inner window of the four x five so I can line it up. But it should be nice and square. And so we're just going to remove this excess material. I'm using a scroll saw. You could use a hacksaw. It's just a little slower. Uh, it does need a, a slow feed rate. A band saw will be better, but I don't have one. So we're going to go with this and see what we can come up with. All right, cut number one done. I'm going to have to clean that up with a file just to smooth that out. Uh, make sure it's going to fit in the recess there. So let's clean that off and do cut number two. In order to keep the top and bottom aligned so that I've got the same cut um, for each, I've actually put double-sided tape on the inside and taped them together. The pins actually keep them pretty well located, but there is a little slop. But the uh, double-sided tape is actually doing a really good job of just keeping those two together. Just about perfect. We've got a little bit of cleaning up to do with the file. I'm a little wider here. And then there is a bevel on two sides. Whoops, you can see here. There's a bevel here and on this side. And that goes into 
this under these tabs and under that lock. So let's grab a file and get that part done. Okay, got that clamped down. Let's just smooth it out. Okay, now let's check where the bevel is supposed to go. The bevel is on the inside, so right now I have these taped together. So let's separate these. <clears throat> I don't think there's going to take all that much to get where it needs to go. That locked right in. Okay. Let's do the black side. It's hot out. Ah. Okay, let's see how this works. That's it. Looks great. So, got both of those in there. These are then sit on top of each other like this. And I've got neg negative carrier inserts. And that's all there is to it. So simply find a uh, substitute that will work, in my case, an Omega D negative carrier had the exact same thickness of the insert that I needed. Then just marking the right dimensions, making sure it's centered, cutting it with a saw. I used a scroll saw, as you saw that, no pun intended, but a Hacksaw would work, a jigsaw would work, a bandsaw would work. Uh, just make sure you're being safe. Safety glasses, gloves if, ne gloves if necessary. And then uh, smooth off any rough edges. I needed to uh, bevel a couple of edges to fit within the inserts here. But if you're making with a mat board, super easy. Mat board would have been the right thickness. I just wanted something a little bit more permanent. That's all. But it's as simple as that. If you are making a negative carrier from scratch, you can customize what you use and the shape that you need. There are specialized negative carriers out there that you can do, such as a um, uh, pin registration for masking and things such as that. We may cover that another time. But please, uh, if you have any questions, just get a hold of me. I'm happy to answer anything that I can. Thank you for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.